Hi Faith Kids! Hi Faith Kids families! So we are going to do a song now and um, this is a song that I wanted to teach you. It kind of is popular for around Easter. I've heard it like all my life but um, it's a kind of contemporary Christian song so I want to teach it to you all and I thought maybe Jenna could play it for us. So come on over here, Jenna. We want you to also sing it with us, so I want to show you the motions to the chorus. When we get to the chorus, this is what we'll do. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, make a cross with your arms, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, but he didn't stay there. From the grave he rose to heaven, to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. All right, let's try it. Let's try to sing it together. How are you all this Sunday morning? Again, we miss you so much. We're glad that you're joining us on Faith Kids Facebook page or wherever you're joining us from for our Sunday School lesson this morning. So our Sunday School lesson comes from a time after Jesus rose from the dead. And if you look at my picture here, this came from our Sunday School lesson. It looks like He's rising from the dead, but this may be a little bit confusing because a lot of us know that Mary and John, Peter, went to the empty tomb and saw that the tomb was empty, and we know that Jesus rose from the dead. But did you know in the book of Acts, chapter 1 in our, in our Bible, it says that Jesus spent about 40 days with the disciples, continuing to teach them after the tomb was empty. So Jesus walked around on the earth with the disciples for 40 days after he rose from the dead and before this happens, okay? This is called Jesus' ascension into heaven. This is when he actually goes and rises into heaven. So we are going to learn about this in our Bible lesson today. Grab a Bible. And we are going to go to the book of Matthew. Again, is Matthew in the Old Testament or the New Testament? So remember, we're talking about Jesus. So this is after Jesus was born. So the book of Matthew is in the New Testament because we're talking about Jesus, okay? In fact, Matthew is one of the books called the Gospel. And the Gospel actually means good news. So this is good news. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the four books of the Bible called the Gospel or the Good News because all four books 
are about the life of Jesus. And the fact that Jesus came to walk on earth among us is really good news. So they wanted to record that into the Bible, not just one time, but four times, from kind of the view of four different disciples. So I'm going to give you a minute to either look up the table of contents, or just flip through your Bible and try to find the New Testament, the first book of the New Testament, okay? In my table of contents, it says it is on page 933, the book of Matthew. But not only are we going to Matthew, we want to go all the way into the book of Matthew, almost to the end, to chapter 28. So that big number is going to be 28, and the little number is going to be 16 actually says the Great Commission, and we're going to figure out what that means, the Great Commission. So pause right now until you find Matthew 28, 16, and when you're done, press play, okay? All right, so let's read that together, or you can just follow along with your finger as I read it. It says the Great Commission, Matthew 28, chapter 16. Then the 11 disciples left for Galilee going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some of them doubted. You know what doubted means? That's kind of a negative word, not really a bad word, but just kind of a, a word like, I'm not sure that what I'm seeing is like right. Are my eyes tricking me? This is like weird. I'm doubting what I'm, my eyes are seeing. My... And more so doubting, their brain just not, could, they just could not comprehend what Jesus was saying to them. It just kind of blew their mind, right? So they are trying to figure out what Jesus is saying to them, okay? And this is what he said. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. So basically it was Jesus was saying, you all, you know this because I've spent some time on earth with you now, but I am the Son of God, and I have all the authority that my Father has given me. And this, this is really important, what he said here, as he's going up to heaven. Therefore, this is what I want you to do. Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Teach these new disciples to obey all of the commands that I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Wow, that is a big job that he gave the disciples to do. Especially this part, go and make disciples of all the nations, okay? So keeping that in mind, I wanna to get to the next part of the lesson. So let me grab something really fast. I have our mystery thingamabob underneath here. <laughs> okay, so can you guess what it is? Some of you did really good at guessing what Misty's was. I thought it was a bowl and last week and she actually had a basket of Easter eggs. So she had an Easter basket. So this goes along with our lesson today. So what do you think is underneath here? I'll give you a hint. It's not very heavy, but in real life, it would be super heavy. I couldn't hold it. Are you ready to show? One, two, three, abracadabra. Here's what it is. It's actually upside down. Okay, so you're right. It is kind of like a ball. It's a beach ball. I had to blow it up, but it represents, what is this? It's a globe. It's a map. It's the whole wide world, right? In a miniature form. So like I said, it's really, really light, but in real life, only God can hold it in place, right? This is the world. So when Jesus said, therefore go and make disciples to every nation, he meant every single one of these places. So many countries, so many continents, seven continents, with lots of countries on each of the continents, mostly. And he wanted the, the um, disciples to go and teach to all these places and make new disciples. So I'm thinking, okay, let me find the place where Jesus was at this time. Because it was a really, really small place. Here it is. 
There's where Jesus was when he told the disciples to go and make new disciples of every nation. So that is the disciples' world at the time that Jesus told them to do that. Do you think they realized that all these places existed and that they would have to get the word out to them? They were probably thinking, Jesus, we are only 11 people. How can we go out and tell the world the message that you love them? So you know what? The disciples really, really, really did a good job of doing that, okay? But before I tell you about how some of the ways that they did that and some of the ways we can do that as those new disciples, we're going to get sing a song that helps us memorize our verse about the Great Commission, the words that Jesus said as he was ascending into heaven. So grab your ball, or if you have a beach ball or a little ball, and grab a parent or grab a sibling, brother, sister, to play this with. And it can even be three of you if there's three or four of you at home, okay? So ready? Go grab that, and then we're going to pass it to each other and learn our new Bible verse, okay? fun, wasn't it? But it was a great way to learn our Bible verse. Therefore go and make disciples of every nation now, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let me think about that. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we know that the Father is God. We know that the Son is Jesus. But God has been in heaven all along, right? looking down and loving all of us. And then he sent Jesus, his son. But now Jesus is going back to heaven to be with his father. And he says, I will send the Holy Spirit to live amongst you, to live in your heart. You will not be able to see me. You will not be able to touch me, but I'm always with you. And I'm going to help you fulfill this great commission. Ooh, big job to do by yourself, right? I'm not sure I could do it by myself, but thankfully I don't have to do it by myself. God sends the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to live amongst us. And that's kind of that feeling that we have in our heart after we ask Jesus to live in our heart. He sends the Holy Spirit to fill up our heart and he kind of guides us every day in what we do. Okay? So we need to kind of tap into that Holy Spirit every day just by talking to God and saying, Holy Spirit, come and live in me. Guide and direct my every step. Tell me what to do with my day so that I can fulfill your great plan and that task that you set before me of going and telling others about you. So that's how I like to start each morning. How can I tell others about Jesus? How can I tell others about the Holy Spirit? Well, let's just back up for just a minute. So how did the disciples, these 11 plus 1, 10 plus 1, how did these 11 disciples go 
and tell the world about Jesus. Okay? Now, do you think that the disciples even knew that the United States of America was a place when Jesus told them to do this? No, probably not. But they took his challenge to go and tell the world. They took it very serious, and they started spreading out all over the land. And remember, they couldn't hop on an airplane back then. They couldn't hop in a car back then or a bus or a train. They either had to go on foot or they had to ride a donkey or something like that to go and tell. But needless to say, that is what they did. Pretty much all of the rest of the New Testament is the stories about how, through, with the Holy Spirit with them, the disciples went out and told everyone within their reach, everyone that had an ear to hear, everyone that, could, um, that they could touch, everyone that they could visit, tell them about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, making new disciples, and then just kind of like a ripple or a domino effect, pretty much the whole world knows about Jesus. Now, not every corner of the world, but pretty much every corner of the world. There is still work to be done. That is why we still have work to do as disciples, as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ. We still have work to do to tell others about Jesus, right? So, just because we weren't one of the chosen 11 disciples of Jesus back in the day, back in the Bible times, it doesn't mean that that Great Commission doesn't apply to us. We have work to do. Even as kids, even as kid followers of Christ, we have work to do, right? So, I want to show you this. And this is a link that um, has been sent to you so that you can download it if you want to and print it off if you want to. If not, just take a look at this, okay? So this is the area where Jesus went to and he ascended into heaven. This is the area that the disciples were in. And they could tell some of this area about Jesus before they got too old or before they died. But it's who they told and made new disciples that went here and 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 here. And before long, the news of Jesus spread all the way over here to you and me, to where you and I lived. And I am so thankful for those people who brought the good news of Jesus across the ocean so that the people of the United States could know about Jesus and can know about his love for us, okay? So here we are. Who are the people now within your reach that you can tell about Jesus? This challenge is not just for the disciples to go and tell. The, the challenge is also for you and me to go and tell. So if you think back to a few weeks ago, it's probably been a few months ago now, the kids were practicing a song called This Little Light of Mine. Okay, and remember we got our candles and we sang this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So guess what that little light is? That little light inside of you is the Holy Spirit that Jesus sent to live within us and to direct our footsteps, direct our speech, direct everything we do. He, that little light inside of us. He wants us to spread to others, to make disciples of others. So let's sing that song, This Little Light of Mine, I'm Gonna Let It Shine. If you have a candle or something, or a pretend candle, you can go get that now, you can pause it. Or if you don't have one of those around, then just use your finger and pretend like that is your little light, okay? All right, so come back and we're gonna sing This Little Light of Mine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Won't let Satan it out, I'm gonna let it shine, 
Won't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Hold it up high. Shine my light till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Shine my light till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Shine my light till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Now we're gonna add a verse to go with our um, lesson today. To every corner of the world, I'm gonna let it shine. Every corner of the world, I'm gonna let it shine. To every corner of the world, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All right, so our challenge for this week, and not really just this week, but kind of the rest of our lives, as followers of Jesus, as disciples of Jesus, people who have that little light, the Holy Spirit living in our hearts because we've asked Jesus to come and live there. And he sent his Holy Spirit to direct our paths. The challenge is each day try to figure out a way that you can share the good news, the gospel of Jesus, telling others about him. So this is a little bit hard to do. I have to admit it's a little bit challenging to me during this time where we are kind of supposed to stay home so we can't get on a plane and go to every nation and tell other people about Jesus right now. So here's some of the ways that Jesus through his Holy Spirit through that little light in my heart has told me that I can maybe make a difference right now. A lot of people are making masks. I might try that if I find a good pattern. I have a sewing machine. I might kind of stretch out of my comfort zone and try to give that a shot to make some masks that I can share that Jesus loves them and Jesus wants you to be safe. Make some masks. Some people are doing that. Some other ways that I have thought about how I could spread Jesus' love is I went downstairs and I just wanted to be crafty one day. So I made some cards. Enjoy the little things because we sure can't do many big things right now. But it says enjoy the little things and you can send that to someone with a note of encouragement. Another thing I've been doing with my time is I've been spending a lot of time in the kitchen and baking and cooking and it's just kind of been fun to do something else to do with my time. But I thought I don't need to be eating all this myself. So we have several neighbors around our neighborhood that um, are a little bit older and I thought I could share some of the baked goods with them. So I've taken it with a little note and dropped it on their porch. And they have been so appreciative of um, the time and the, um, you know, me listening to the Holy Spirit telling me to bring them something just to kind of cheer them up because a lot of the older people are really, really lonely right now. Another thing that you can do is some of you really like to color. So I am including this in your lesson this week that you can take and color. Now, we're going to color one of these and send it to a grandma. It's actually Pastor Tim's grandma. She's 99 years old. She turned 99 years old during the quarantine, during this pandemic. And she's in a nursing home all by herself. We love her so much and we can't visit to her, but we can still tell her. Jesus told me to say to you, that he loves you and he's holding your hand even though we can't during this time so that's a way that we can share god's love and fulfill the great commission i bet you all can think of a lot more things okay so i have seen some of the things that you all have thought of as sharing the gospel of the good news of jesus and maybe cheering other people up during this time if you can think of another way that god has told you to share the good news and tell others about him. Could you comment on that and maybe even share a picture of how you've done that? Um, I have walked through the neighborhood and seen sidewalk chalk messages to neighbors who are walking by because the weather is getting nicer now and people are spending more time outside on walks or bike rides. So they've decided to kind of send a little message that this house believes in Jesus and this house wants you to know that Jesus loves you. So be creative and I challenge you to look at ways that you can fulfill the great commission, the great challenge that Jesus gave us 
of going into all the world and telling other people about him. Again, I miss you so much. Can't wait for the time that we can be together again. But I know that you all are super faith kids who love Jesus Christ. And that even though we are stuck inside the doors, inside the walls of our house, that you can find ways to spread his word and go and tell others about Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for each day of life that you've given to us. And Lord, we know that in this time of just weird, weird days, we know that you are working amongst us, that you are, through your Holy, Holy Spirit, you are talking to our hearts through your Holy Spirit. And we know that you have something for us to learn and to take away from this, Lord. Help us to be sensitive and really listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to what you have left us, a message to go and make disciples of all the nations. And dear Lord, just show us, you be the director of our hearts and show us ways that we can do that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Again, if you have something that you would like to leave us in the comment, share with us what this message meant to you or share with us your creative ways or maybe things that you've been doing as a family to listen to the Holy Spirit and um, meet that challenge of going out and making disciples of the, all the world. Share that in your comments below and I'd love to chat with you on um, the discussion so I can comment back to you. So leave us a message down below and we will see you next Sunday. Have a great week. Love you all.